Light, nimble and extrovert, the Nissan Duke was the original small super mini derived crossover model, combining attitude, irreverence, modish style and energy with a mischievous sense of fun. Since its original launch, plenty of would-be rivals have attempted to copy its concept, prompting Nissan to introduce a whole series of improvements to try and ensure continued segment leadership. As before, the result certainly won't appeal to everyone, but then that's because it isn't supposed to. It's aimed at the young and the young at heart, many of whom will continue to love this car and admire its designers for having the courage to do something different. Very different. Dynamically, the Duke has a wider brief to fulfil than the usual one allotted to a small crossover model of this kind, as well as competing with lifestyle-oriented SUV-style super minis like Renault's Capture and Peugeot's 2008. It must also appeal to extrovert-style-conscious buyers who might otherwise buy something sportier, a Citroen DS3 perhaps, or maybe a Mini. That means it has to handle, which is quite an ask for something nearly 1.6 metres in height and weighing over 1.3 tonnes. Still, as you begin to realise when throwing this duke around the country lanes, the cleverness of modern engineering means that unpromising statistics like these can still be converted into a car that delivers a satisfying steer. Nissan has had to adopt a pretty stiff setup to make it all work, but it's a bearable compromise. Especially now that the suspension is a little more supple in mainstream models, creating a car that rides not too badly around town, yet rolls surprisingly little through tighter bends. And you can adjust its demeanour to suit either environment thanks to the setting that lie behind this D mod button here, gateway to NDCS the Nissan Dynamic Control System that's standard on all but the humblest Duke models. What's important though at the end of the day is, even if you forget all this frippery, this car really does drive as the looks suggest it should, or at least most variants do. To be honest, the entry level baseline 1.6 litre petrol versions aren't going to offer you a particularly rewarding dynamic experience, whether you choose the 94 PS manual gearbox model or the 117 PS CVT automatic. A much better option if you can stretch to it is the higher tech 115 PS 1.2 litre DIGT petrol power plant whose introduction really is the headline news with this revised first generation design. It's a unit that works well in Nissan's larger Qashqai crossover so as you can imagine it feels even better in a little Duke. Sprinting to 62 miles per hour in 10.8 seconds on the way to 111 miles per hour, at the same time as returning efficiency figures that are a match for far feebler petrol rivals. The other mainstream Duke option is the single 1.5 litre DCI diesel model of the car that I'm driving here. Its engine isn't especially quiet, but it is a pleasing and torquey unit with 260 newton meters of pulling power, leaving it capable of 62 miles per hour from rest in 11.2 seconds on route to 112 miles per hour. Is that enough to cash the sporty check that looks at this car appear to write? If you're unconvinced, then your Nissan dealership will direct you to one of the top models equipped with the 1.6 litre DIGT turbocharged petrol power and good for at least 190 PS, which means the car will be good for 62 miles per hour from rest in just 7.8 seconds on the way to 134 miles per hour. This improved model gets a revised front grille incorporating the smarter V-shape found on the brand's other models, but around it the same delicious design details remain. Take the side lights and indicators that burst up through slashes on the bodywork, or headlights that are modelled on rally car fog lamps from the 60s and come redesigned in this revised Duke to incorporate LED daytime running lights and the option of xenon bulbs. Like the door mirrors with their LED side turn indicators, these can be ordered with colour-coded finishing. Also personalisable through a choice of colours are the trim panels on the restyled bumpers you'll find at the front and here at the rear. 
Just above, which is below the integrated rear spoiler, the Nissan's 370 sports car style boomerang shaped rear lights now also include LED technology for a distinctive nighttime signature. It's just as interesting inside, though there are no expensive soft touch plastics used you don't really notice, such as the design exuberance. Take the centre console from which the gear lever protrudes, modelled to resemble the top of a superbike's fuel tank and finished in either red or grey high gloss paint. The instruments too uh, look like that of a bike's, with twin clocks shrouded by heavy cowls. Even the door armrests, shaped like flippers used by scuba divers, are supposed to reflect an active outlook. As for the boot, well, that's probably the biggest story with this revised first generation model. Its tiny size was the biggest issue owners had with the original version of this car and the biggest reason potential buyers had to ignore this model. So, Nissan's design team, well, they went to work, changing the shape of the trunk area to improve capacity by a massive 40% to 354 litres. The Duke was always a clever idea. Launched by Nissan to offer SUV-like style for the small car sector without any SUV-like compromises. Precisely the same trick the company's bigger cash guy crossover had already pulled off in targeting larger family size models in the market segment above. There's no point though in starting a trend if you're not prepared to develop it. And in the face of increasing competition, this car needed to evolve. It has. In answer to crossover rivals that are more spacious inside and claim to be cleverer and more efficient, Nissan has given its second bestseller a bigger boot, a far more competitive affordable petrol option and a dose of cutting edge media and safety tech, all without appreciably diluting this car's strong value proposition. It's an original in every sense.